Anthony Artwick here with the debut of the Louisville Softball Player Profiles. I'm joined today by Cindy McKeever. Cindy, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you're welcome. It's been about a month since we got the news that, that spring sports were going to be canceled for the 2020 season. Uh, when that news broke, what were the kind of emotions that were going through your head? I had all kinds of emotions because – for this season, I had a lot of individual goals that I set just because it's my senior season. So I was pretty heartbroken over all of it. And I know the rest of my team was too. We just didn't really take it lightly. You were one of the teams that, that us at YSN were so excited to kind of start to get to cover. Won a state championship last year. What was kind of the feeling uh, coming back this year? I know you got a couple of weeks with your team before everything shut down. What was the feeling around the team? Uh, it was a great feeling still. We were still all pretty excited that we won the state last year. We had the same goals this year, just work together as a team, be together, and really improve this season because we had a lot of upcoming freshmen who were coming in. So it was just overall, we were just trying to still play together. What were some of your favorite kind of memories with this softball team? Of course, the state championship has to rank up there pretty high. But uh, other than that, what, what are some favorite memories with this team? Um, I think it was our South Range, South Range game last year. We drove and it was pretty muddy out and we had like a dance off in the rain with the other team. So that was one of them. And then there was also districts last year was my, probably my favorite game I've ever played against Lake. It was so high and intense and it was just a really fun game to be in. You know, we got to broadcast that game that you guys played at South Range. It was part of a tournament. There were a lot of teams there. The, yeah. the, way, the way you described your team, they were so kind of loose and kind of always having fun, dancing in front of the camera, things like that. Um, how, how do you describe the personality of this team? Uh, using one word, we're just wild. Like, we like to have fun, play loose. We're all pretty much best friends. We played softball together for a very long time, so we're just all kind of used to each other. How did that personality of the team kind of give you guys an advantage as you went through the state championship? Well, we were basically like a family. We know how everyone on our team plays, so that was a huge advantage, like playing together for such a long time. And then we really just came together last season and won ourselves a state championship. You know, uh, we talked about uh, that state championship. Let's pull you back because that game was crazy nuts. 10 in game, back and forth. What was the emotions of that game like? There were so many emotions throughout the game. Like beforehand, some of us were sick just because, like, nerves. And then after that, like, we just knew we needed to play together to come out with a win. It was nerve wracking. There was a whole bunch of anxiety. Like, it was just crazy fun. You got to play at Akron Firestone Stadium, and that, that's probably – it's such an amazing stadium down there, Pro, uh, professional athletes playing it. What was it like kind of being in that atmosphere? I've actually played there before. There was a travel ball tournament there before, but I still think it's the coolest feeling to play in a stadium that big with a whole – like the whole stands were filled with a bunch of fans. It was just – it was nuts. You talked about personal goals that you set for yourself for this year. What what were they? What kind of things did you want to see from yourself? Um, this year I was going to go to get my 100th career steal. I think I had 65 going into this season. So that was just something that I worked on throughout since my freshman year. I just wanted to get to 100 career steals throughout high school. And then I also just set a goal for myself to hit a dinger this year. <laughs> just – just because it's my senior season, like, why not? Um, you know, you're, you're, such, you're probably one of the premier base stealers in the state. Um, one of the reasons that you were so highly recruited. Talk about your mentality on the base pass. Always look to advance, no matter what. If the, just pick up the defense. If there's, like, an error and somebody's playing too far away from the base, pick up on that, then take what I can get. Base running in high school is is so different when, than when the softball you watch on TV. I mean, sometimes when someone walks, they can just take an extra base because other teams not paying attention. Do you think that, or the, is that something that you always are looking at? At if the if the other if the defense is kind of lulling, you can just take an extra base. Yes, I do that a lot actually. 
it's just it's just something you got to pick up pretty quick. It's really instinctive to me now. Just, you always got to look for the next base, no matter what. Talk about your coaching staff at Louisville and what it's been like being under them and kind of some of the things they taught you uh, throughout your softball career. Uh, Coach Arnie and Coach Miller and uh, Coach Bryce, they, Coach Rice has coached for such a long time and Coach Miller and Coach Arnie played college softball so they had a very, like a lot of experience going into it. Uh, their biggest thing was just a, one air and then there's no more the rest of the game. Like we throw that air away and then we continue to play as a team and we continue playing together. Uh, we also had this thing called like a three second rule. Like if we like, for example, struck out we walk back to the dugout, we get three seconds, and then we have to zone back into the game, dial in, and continue playing as a team. You know, with that three-second rule, I see a lot of college softball players have that same kind of deal. Was that hard to kind of get yourself used to doing that and getting your mind used to letting your letting the mistakes go? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, it's just the, the three-second rule. You know, that's something that you see a lot of college softball players talk about. Was that a hard thing to adjust to, to kind of get your mind to only give yourself three seconds and then let things go? Yeah, I beat myself up a lot individually as a player just because I love the game and I always want to succeed in it. So it was a hard adjustment, but as the season went on, it got easier and easier because I knew my team had my back the whole entire time. Was there a point last season when, when you guys kind of knew that you had something special and that you had a legitimate shot at winning the state championship? Yeah, I would just say going into tournaments overall, we were so prepared and we just knew this season was going to be our season. It was very special to every single one of us. And it, for uh, our seven seniors last year, like that's, it was just our season to help them win a state championship. Such a big senior class. What was it like kind of giving them that state championship and, and working that for them and kind of solidifying all their four years of hard work? Oh, it was just, it was the greatest feeling ever, letting them seniors get that state championship for the final year. Like I said before, like, I've played with most of them my whole entire life, and it, it was just such a good feeling to be able to watch them walk away their senior year with a championship like that. With such a big senior class, there was so much leadership on your team last year. Now that you're a senior, you were going to be asked to kind of step up and be that senior leader. What kind of things were you doing to kind of prepare yourself to be in that role? I've always kind of been a leader just because my game, like I play very competitive and I love whenever everybody's talking on the field. This year we had a lot of new players coming up that I've never really played with before. So as a leader this year, I was just trying to get to know everybody, get to know everybody's game, make sure everybody's on the same page with our goals this year. And it was working out for the best for all of us. Uh, adjusting to this season was, it was difficult at first, but Getting, starting to get to know everybody, we're really coming together as a team. For it, my leadership individually, I let everyone play their own game because everybody does play the game differently. I didn't want anyone to like follow in my footsteps and play the game exactly how I play it. So I just kind of wanted to adjust everybody else's game and then go from there with leadership. Now I know you're going to go and you're going to play at the next level. I'm going to give you the chance to kind of tell everyone on YSN Nation uh, where you're going to go and, and, and uh, where you're going to play next year. Uh, I'm going to the University of Toledo. It's it's a D1 school. It's I've known Coach Joe since I was in eighth grade, and being recruited by him was great. And then during the recruiting process, I'm normally a middle infielder, but anything could happen. So I don't know exactly where I'm going to play at or where I'll be in the lineup, but I'm very excited to find out. Talk about that recruitment process and kind of what made you uh, choose Toledo and what made you really want to go there. Uh, like I said, I just, I went to, I've had goals my whole life to just play D1, like get to the next level. And so the recruiting process started really early, early for me. I was going to camps with my older sister when I was in seventh grade and just meeting coaches and talking to coaches. Uh, coach Joe, he just, he really stood out to me as a coach because he's, he, every single time you would walk into a camp, he would always know your name. Like he would know every single person's name. He really just really focused on the girls themselves as individuals, and he always took the time out to talk to you. So that's kind of where I fell in love with him coaching me. Uh, he was this, very helpful at every single camp. 
this senior season was kind of like your last chance to kind of gear up and see live pitches and be ready for the next level. You don't have that. So what have you been doing uh, in the meantime and in the summer to kind of keep yourself ready and, and make sure that when you step on Toledo's campus next year, you're ready to play at the next level? I, I go to a hitting coach. Brian Rice is my hitting coach. So he's been helping me a lot, like just getting getting uh, in the field for things again, getting back to the swing of things. And then my dad has also been my travel ball coach my whole life. So having him at home, we go to the field all the time and really just work on things that we think need to be worked on, pick out the small mistakes that I'm making and just try to fix it for whatever, so I can be prepared for Toledo. Now the Max has been in the news um, this week because they decided to – kind of cancel their softball, baseball tournaments. Um, have you ever been to a MAC tournament at Firestone Stadium? And, and what were kind of your feelings when you heard that the next year the MAC wasn't going to have the softball tournament? I've never actually been to the tournament itself, but I'm sure it was, again, playing at Firestone, it's a crazy feeling. So I'm sure that was uh, something big that was really enjoyable at Toledo. But from my understanding, I think we get to play more like regular season games. So I'm – I'm okay with it. It's going to be a different adjustment than I was looking for, but I think it's going to work out. Now, you said your dad has been your travel coach your whole life, and the whole joke in the softball community is having that softball dad. You know, everyone likes to make fun of it. And uh, what's that coaching dynamic and the relationship been like with you and your dad as he's the coach and dad? Uh, me and my dad are super close because he's he's been my coach since I was probably four years old. He's always been – coaching me, just trying to make me my best. So it made us stronger. Yeah, sometimes he was hard at me and he beat me up about it sometimes, but it only made me a better athlete in the end of the day. Um, what, was, were, are you the avenue to your dad's love of softball, or was he kind of in the game before you started getting into it? Well, I have an older sister who played mm -hmm. softball too, so he fell in love with it whenever she started playing, and then he really wanted to I fell in love with it watching it on TV, so he just knew it was something important that was going to be in our lives forever. So we both kind of just fell in love with it through that. Talk about your travel uh, career and how much that helped you kind of be prepared to reach all your goals that you, that you set for yourself. Uh, I play for a small organization for travel ball. It's the Ohio Emeralds. Uh, we won three national titles and we've gotten second once and third place three times. And just going to all those big tournaments help, really helped me in the recruiting process because it was just exposure. And for to get recruited, our team just likes to have a lot of fun and it just draws natural attention whenever we have fun. We never, ever give up whenever we're playing together and that just helps so much. You know, you said you fell in love with softball watching it on TV, so I have to ask, did you have any softball players growing up that you kind of idolized or you kind of tried to mold your game after? Uh, my favorite softball player of all time is Bailey Landry. She played for LSU. That's LSU, my favorite team. Yep. And then Montana Fouts. She plays at Alabama now. Mm -hmm. I actually played against her whenever I was younger. So those two I just really look up to a lot. They're playing at the, the top level that you can play at, and I just really look up to them. And uh, let's have some fun with you before, before we let you go, because we've been in quarantine for so long, it feels like it's been forever. Um, in the house, stuck in the house, what's been your favorite quarantine activity? I started picking up some new hobbies. I, like, I recently learned how to do nails. I'm also really into art, so I just draw and paint a lot. And I also try to get outside and run and do my workouts still, so. Yeah, it's been so important in these kind of times to kind of find things outside of the sport to kind of keep yourself engaged. So what kind of things have you been doing to – I don't know, counteract the, the, the void that softball has kind of left? Well, I just continue to stay to my workout plan and just modify it to do it at home. I still go on my daily runs to maintain my endurance and my speed. And I still hit at the – I have a softball field, like, in my backyard, basically. So I go there all the time and really work out. Now, softballs are the only thing that got changed because school also, you know, you had to do everything virtually. So – how did you handle that transition and finishing all your senior work um, virtually and, and online? It wasn't that big of an adjustment for me because I've taken online classes in the past before. So it wasn't too big of an adjustment. It was hard not being able to reach out to my teachers as much because we're not in class. But 
they were pretty open and free to every email I sent them. They would reply to as soon as they could. And they were also really understanding that we do have things going on outside of school. So they didn't overload us with work, which was nice. But my grades maintained the same and I still got all my work done and got my diploma. Got that thing. Um, before we let you go, just um, to get, take the time to say what kind of makes you proud to represent Louisville and, and that you got to wear the Louisville colors for four years and, and you got to go to that school system. Uh, our community, just as a whole, I'm so proud of our community. Without them, we probably wouldn't have won the state championship last year. They filled the stands completely. They were cheering on the whole entire game, and it was just such a great feeling to have the whole community come together to support all of us. It's just the community is something I'm so proud of throughout Louisville. All right, Sydney, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, good luck in your future endeavors. We're definitely going to be rooting you on in Toledo. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.